Hello, this is David Hardman, and in this presentation I'm going to be talking about the decline of behaviourism. For much of the 20th century, behaviourism really was the dominant paradigm within psychology. But around about the late 1950s and into the 1960s, behaviourism did decline and uh, was replaced to some extent by the growing paradigm of cognitive psychology. It seems that one of the precipitating events uh, behind the decline of behaviourism was a review by Noam Chomsky of a book that B.F. Skinner had published in 1957 called Verbal Behaviour. In this book, Skinner tried to extend his work on operant conditioning to explain the acquisition of language in children. This book assumed that uh, children's utterances um, were either uh, reinforced or corrected by their parents, um, leading to the acquisition of uh, correct grammatical understanding. But Chomsky pointed out that children actually say many sentences that they've never heard before, and moreover that children go through a stage in their language development where they actually tend to use incorrect grammar. So instead, for example, of saying that uh, mummy went to the shops, they might say mummy goed to the shops. So these kinds of things were rather hard to account for uh, through Skinner's ideas of operant conditioning. Uh, by contrast, Chomsky suggested that we have an innate language acquisition device that predisposes us to acquire the language of whichever culture we grow up in. In 1961, uh, a paper by two of Skinner's students was published called The Misbehaviour of Organisms. And uh, these students, Breland and Breland, noted that uh, they'd studied thousands of animals uh, in which they'd uh, attempted to condition these animals to do various things but many of these attempts at conditioning had actually resulted in uh, failure so one example that they gave was of trying to train a raccoon to put two coins into a box and so they began with just one coin at first and observed that the raccoon only seemed to want to rub the coin against the side of the box. Eventually they did get, manage to get it to put the coin in the box, but then it became impossible to condition the raccoon to put two coins into the box. Uh, when it was presented with two coins, all it did was just rub them together. And Breland and Breland describe several examples like this one and at the end of their paper they conclude that after 14 years of continuous conditioning and observation of thousands of animals it is our reluctant conclusion that the behaviour of any species cannot be adequately understood, predicted or controlled without knowledge of its instinctive patterns, evolutionary history and ecological niche. Another uh, figure who worked in the behaviourist tradition but uh, to some extent questioned it was Edward Tolman. Uh, he uh, conducted several studies in which rats were um, required to find their way through mazes and without going into the uh, specific details of these studies they, they showed at the end that there was some evidence that rats had uh, internal maps of their environment that uh, Tolman referred to as cognitive maps. In another series of studies, uh, Garcia and colleagues uh, produced evidence that uh, rats were predisposed to link sickness with the last foodstuff that they'd eaten. So, um, for example, uh, Garcia and colleagues would uh, present rats with uh, sweetened water, which uh, uh, rats very much like. Some of these rats would then subsequently be exposed to radiation and because of that they would become sick. Uh, when presented with sweetened water then later on, say a day later, 
they would avoid the water, whereas rats who had not been exposed to the radiation uh, would not tend to avoid the water. And even when other stimuli had been encountered um, in between the original food and uh, the subsequent uh, offering of sweetened water, um, they didn't seem to associate the sickness with these other stimuli, which included sights and sounds. They only uh, seemed to associate the sickness with the sweetened water. Uh, and this was important because it showed that um, the rats could uh, learn this aversion after just one trial and even where there was a long delay uh, involved which seemed to go against everything that uh, the behaviourists had previously been uh, talking about. Uh, Bandura, uh, another researcher, observed that uh, creatures can uh, learn just by observing others and without any kind of direct reward. So again, this was something that was uh, hard to account for through the traditional behaviourist ideas. So those are a few of the things that gave rise to the uh, decline of behaviorism. Uh, and in the next screencast, I'll be talking about specifically the cognitive revolution.